For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Teams. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another off-season tips video for you guys for CFM. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys uh, some rebuild strategies. As you can see, my team right now is currently a 93 overall with a 93 defense and a 95 offense. I think that's kind of jaded based off the fact that I don't actually have my roster set right now. I have a pretty pretty slim roster, which is probably my tip number one. When the off-season rolls around, you got to cut your roster down to basically cut all the fat once again. That's something that a lot of people don't really understand. If I go through a lot of other people's rosters right now, you'll probably see a lot of players that really don't have any value. Like if I look at the Niners here, this guy's a kind of a new owner, even though he has a really good team in the 49ers, there's a lot of areas of opportunity here. Areas like backup quarterback here, this Steve Thurston guy, I have no idea who this guy is, but I can tell by his 88 throw power, his 74 speed, uh, his contract, he doesn't look like a player that I'm ever really going to build or have any value for. So if I were to cut him right now, I could save 700000 which is, you know, anything close to a million, I'm going to do that all the time because I'm probably at the least going to find a better quarterback or a better backup quarterback in the free agent market when the season starts or I'm probably going to find, at the very least, somebody in the draft that I like better. I mean, this is just not a player that I would keep. It looks like he did do that, though, when it comes to the running backs. He doesn't really have any running backs. I just picked the team at random here. So this guy did cut his roster pretty lean, which, like I said, that'd probably be, like, the first thing that I would do. I guess I'll try to find a different roster of somebody that, you know, might have some fat. Like right here, this guy, the Jets, who is a guy who's been in the league for a while now. There's a lot of areas of opportunity here, especially when it comes to free agency. I mean, when the season ends, when the season rolls over a lot of times they'll sign the computer will sign like a bunch of players that really have no value i'm not sure if these are practice squad guys that'd be my guess guys that get signed over from the practice squad but i just cut all these guys that backup quarterback right there you can see if i cut him it saves nine hundred twenty thousand dollars. there's no signing bonuses all this stuff is huge. Uh, that's about a million per player. So that's a million there. That's a million there. Whoever these guys are, you can save a million dollars on all these guys just as long as they don't have any value to fit your system. I'm not looking at overalls here. I'm looking at things like speed, if it's a running back or a receiver, uh, or if it's a quarterback, things like speed and throw power make more sense. If we're looking at, uh, you know, all these guys. I mean, I just looked at five guys all making on average about a million dollars a contract. Maybe six. This guy right here, Pokey Wilson. These guys right here, if I cut all of them, I'm saving uh, $7 million, which I can spend on free agents. Now, going back to my roster, because I already made all those cuts. I'll show you what my roster looks like as it's super lean. I only have like 30 players on the roster right now. There's no real players that don't have value, with the exception of maybe this guy here. I mean, I could probably cut Cam Jurgens. He, he was a guy who was young, was never really worth working up as his overall was just too low. I could probably get rid of him, but at the moment I'm hanging on to him. I'm not really sure why, but you can see there's really not a lot of fat here. I mean, Tyler Steen, I'm only saving 300,000. So for me, it's better just to keep that guy. Maybe I can work him up a little bit. Who knows? Maybe I can get some trade value for him. Who knows? There are still a few players that are hanging around on my roster that I want to trade. I don't necessarily want to cut. A guy like Bryce Huff, he's 27 years old. He's got an A6 speed defensive end. That has value to me. I'm still going to try to trade this guy before the draft to get a crew maybe like a second or a third round pick, which to me is totally possible or totally likely. So my roster, like I said, super lean. I don't even have all positions filled. I don't even have a right outside linebacker. I'm going to have to draft one. I don't have uh, you know a lot of positions I am probably under on, but that's fine because, like I said, I still have... A a full boatload of draft picks and we go ahead we look at what draft picks i've accrued over the season now i just ha i had two first round picks i just traded mine uh if you guys saw that i'll go and i'll show you guys what the trade was but before i do that i'm going to go into the free agency market because we're in the free agent market right now now there's not a lot of areas of need on my team because of you can see how highly rated of an overall team this is a good team that i built started off with a pretty good team i do have a bid in on zach martin because i do think that one of the few areas that i can improve is my offensive line but you can see here that there's four teams in the bid and i'm not at the top so i'm going to show you guys a trick on how to make sure that you can get this guy to be number one so that i can get up the board and this will be to the point where i'm going to get my contract accepted so we're going to go ahead we're going to go into this like i said there's a couple ways to do it number one I could just use the neutral, player-friendly, or very player-friendly options, and it'll basically do that for me, which is something that you know I'm totally okay with. If I do this, if I go all the way at the very, uh, very 
player friendly as I'm having trouble talking. It really goes to a ridiculous amount of years. Three years, 34 years old for Zach Martin seems like a lot. That's probably my biggest issue, even more than the salary. Paying that much for that many years is he's surely going to degrade. He might even retire. So if I make this offer, which is very player friendly, there's a good chance that it's going to get accepted. It tells you that. And if I go back down to it now, you can see I still didn't move up. But it's something that I'm, I'm at least more in contention. I'm still in the top three now. I got the extra bar added. But I wasn't happy about that contract anyway. So I'm going to show you guys a better trick by doing a custom offer. You can see like it says right here. It says very high acceptance chance. I'm going to basically make that so that he, I guarantee he's going to accept my contract by basically just flubbing with the numbers right here. Now, number one, salary doesn't really matter. They don't really care as much about salary as any bonus. So let's say I go crazy and I just push this salary number up to about you know 15 million which would make it a very high contract. Let's go, go even higher because like I said, this is something I'm going to finagle anyway. Let's go 16 and a half million. Really ridiculous. One year. I know he refers a two year. So let's go ahead and let's give him that. Uh, but you can see right here, uh, the two years length he's happy with, happier than if I would give him a one year. I'll show you how that looks in a minute. But you can see if I go down to him now, it takes me right to the top. But I'm still over overpaying. When it comes to signing free agents like Zach Martin here, if I want to guarantee that I get him and not other players get him, there's a couple different tricks. One of the better ones is very player friendly, which means you're overpaying for a player, but you can see right there, it says it's a very high chance of acceptance. If I let the computer create this and I hit make offer, it's still not going to put me at number one most times. As you're going to see right here, it has, if I go back down, I'm still third. I'm in the top three, I'm in the running, I guess, but I'm still third. I want to be at the top. I want to be at the top offer. So how do I get to that spot? spot. Number one, I don't really want to give this guy a three-year contract anyway since he's 34 years old. I'd much be rather happier with a two-year contract as I can save a little money that way, but they don't care as much about the salary as they do bonus. If I go really high on the salary, you'll see that they really care more about the bonus money, just like real life. Let's say I give them, you know, offer them 15 million, which is going to be a high number. I don't really want to pay that, but I'm going to mess around with this anyway. So if we make that offer, you can see it's going to, it's going to give him a higher chance of preferring me, but I'm still not number one. And I don't really want to pay him that much anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave that 9.9 .9 million right where it is, but we're going to push up the bonus money. The bonus money is what they care about, which is also what real life players care about too. So like I said, I know he doesn't really want a one year offer, but I'll go ahead and I'll do that. You can see the one year length there. He's not really all about that life. He's got a yellow bar, but it still is going to put me number one because I have that offer so high when it comes to um, you know, it comes to guaranteed money. There's more weighted interest in guaranteed money than salary. So I could actually lowball him on salary if I really want to. I know he cares about the two years and I know he cares about this. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to pump up the bonus so that we can guarantee that we get his guy. I'm going to go ahead and put it. And the other thing too is you don't have to go straight to the top. I don't have to just go over the top and hope that I get it. I can slowly move this bonus up until I'm number one on the board and I know that I'm guaranteed. Now salary is a little low. He doesn't like that. So that's probably going to hurt me. As you can see, I'm all the way back down so we're going to finagle that so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to leave the salary right there that's what they're suggesting i'm going to leave it right there we're going to play with the bonus money until it gets me in first place at whatever i set so we're going to try 14 million see if that gets me in first place as you can see right here i'm still in second place so i know that i gotta go a little bit higher on the bonus money like i said i'll keep the two-year deal because that does actually save me a little bit of money if you say i go one year i have 17 million remaining if i go two years i have 17.6 so it saves me a little bit to go two years anyway and i'm pretty sure at 34 years old he could play two more years and it won't kill me so i think i stopped at 14 million last time let's go let's go up to 14.5 take a look at what this looks at what this looks like as you can see i'm still not first so i'm pretty sure i'm gonna have to go pretty hefty on the bonus up to about 15 mil make that offer right there boom let's see what it looks like as i'm still not first i might have to give him a third year i really don't want to do that let's go ahead, let's push the salary up just a little bit like I said, I'm really just trying to get this guy without going too crazy. If I can get him with and still have 14 million cap, that'd be great. So let's see what I get right here. Like I said, if I have to, I can give him a third year as I'm really just going to keep doing this until I find the exact number that I need to be to be in first place. So let's keep going. Like I said, I'm not too concerned with the amount because, you know, I, I could always create more money. So let's go ahead and let's go all the way up to 16 mil. Let's see if this is enough. And we are finally in first. So I got my contract. I figured out the exact amount that I needed. And we're going to, in, in a few minutes, we're going to actually go through with this and see if I got Zach Martin on my team. The other thing that is a really good idea when it comes to, um, you know, putting, uh, putting bids in on players 
is when you if you know when your league is going to get advanced, say it's going to get advanced, like mine's going to get advanced at 5 o'clock. I want to check this at 4.55 and make sure that I'm still at the top offers when it comes to this, because I'm sure other players will be doing that the same way. But you don't want somebody to come in and do the exact same trick that I did right before advance and basically you know just, just put in a bigger bid and take the guy right out from under you. So I don't have a ton of cap space. You can see I have about 13 mil here, um, which is good. Like That's all I really need to fill out the rest of my roster because I have a large draft amount of capital too, which is going to fill out most of my roster. But this is pretty much all you need to do. You just need to, to do this right before they advance try to put in the top offer and make sure that you get your guy now even without that i do want to fix my line which is one of the most important things but this is a lot of money for fixing a guy especially for fixing a line especially for a guy this old so there's always better cheaper deals out there and i'm going to show you guys one such deal that i found uh when it comes to a trade that just got accepted before this went on and that's me i traded my one of my first round picks the 23rd pick and a fourth round pick for a right tackle who's not a real player by the name of Terrell Flowers. Now, if I look at Terrell Flowers' contract, which is really the big thing, the really big difference, which is why I made this trade over signing a guy like Zach Martin, which I still want to do, I'm still trying to do, kind of for the purpose of this video, but Terrell Flowers only costs a fraction of what this is going to cost. He's not as high. He's a, he's a, he's an X-Factor player, which is pretty rare for linemen. He's a fake player that was an X-Factor from last year's draft. But at under $2 million per, I'd much rather have this guy who builds really fast than uh, basically you know take the, uh, the Zach Martin type deals of the world because of how much money that costs. But I'm really trying to pump up my line in general all over. So if I, I trade this guy because, like I said, you can't beat that. $2 million dollars for a guy like say you know he's a year advanced already whoever owned him before already put a year of work into him and he's an a3 overall player compared to i mean i drafted i, w I made a video last uh off season where i drafted uh some linemen that all turned out to be superstars but let's go and let's check out my roster real quick as i'm really trying to build up this roster back i really really feel like offensive line is my biggest issue i have jordan mylotta which is great i have landon dickerson which is great but I don't really have a center because Jason Kelsey retired, and I don't have a right tackle anymore. At least I didn't before I got Terrell Flowers because uh, Lane Johnson retired, and I noticed a difference in my pass pro. So I have him, who is a superstar, and Alexander Dwyer, who's also a superstar, and Tom Gilka, who's also a superstar. So those guys are going to make up my center, my right guard, and my uh, my right tackle. Now my right tackle, I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep as uh, Alexander Dwyer. I'm not really sure yet because I haven't really looked too deeply into these guys, but there's no doubt that Terrell Flowers is better. So I actually think I might be moving this guy into guard or something like that. I'm not really sure. I'll mess around with that um, in the offseason. I really don't know how the draft's going to fall out. I might draft another guy. If I get, um, you know, the 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 if the contract works out and I get the uh, the guard, if I get uh, Zach Wilson, or I'm sorry, Zach uh, Martin, I'm going to put him at one of these positions. He might be my center. I'm not really sure yet. But I have a lot of options here. One of my bigger issues is Lyman takes so long to grow that Alexander Dwyer, even though he's a superstar player, he really didn't grow that fast. And I don't know why it says this guy's only a superstar when he's actually an X-Factor, which is like I said, you don't really have X-Factor abilities for Lyman, but he does grow that much faster, which is the point. Because whoever had this guy grew, because he's an X-Factor, grew him to an 80-something overall, or like an 83 overall, 84 overall, excuse me, while um, I was trying to grow my, you know, superstar guys who are actual superstars, and they really only grew to, you know, this guy here took forever. He only grew to a 77. Uh, stuff like that you can't you know that's the thing about linemen you can't grow them as easily as you can grow like receivers or you know quarterbacks you just throw the ball a ton or run the ball a lot if you're right back or get a ton of interceptions if you have a defensive player or whatever you can do those things but there's no stats for linemen and there's no real way to grow linemen you can't do uh, practices you know can't, you can't do focal player practices with them every week there's not a lot you really can do so you kind of just need to get top-notch guys and that's why I was like you know what trail prior or trail flowers I'll take that and hopefully this guy here will get to a 90 in no time as he already has a lot of x-factor stuff unlocked but regardless of whether or not i get um you know zach martin i have alexander dwyer here who's a backup option at one of these positions who's also a superstar who i can continue to try to grow and tom gilkey who should be an 80 overall pretty soon so it's like these guys here so should uh, alexander dwyer so these guys should grow pretty quickly I mean, they're all young if i'm thinking long term 10 years down the line i wouldn't even make the zach martin sign 
But uh, this is, you know, since I don't have a lot of time before this season ends and the next men's season starts, I really want to speed up the process and get higher rated guys because we've only got about a season or two before, you know, NCAA comes out and everybody's going to be playing that. So I want to get these guys moving up a little bit quicker so I can try to go for more, uh, you know, be more competitive in the Super Bowl atmosphere this year. Now, one more tip that I didn't really go over when it comes to guys like Zach Martin is when you look at the interest bars, his interest in, in joining my team, actually, I had to change change my scheme to do it his scheme fit was not the same so he didn't have nearly as much interest so if you have a free agent that you want that doesn't really have a ton of interest in you you could always change your scheme to to make them more interested now i'm going to try to find a defensive player to use this example um, as you can see there's you know i don't really have a lot of defensive players in mind but uh, that's going to be one of the bigger deciding factors that you can control so let's say that i wanted to go after marcus davenport okay i don't but let's say that i do all i would have to do is go through go back to my um, my franchise staff or managed staff go to uh, team schemes and change my scheme until i find a scheme that he wants to play in so we could try something like uh, you know, I'm not really sure what exactly it is he wants to play in, but let's say he probably wants to play in like a 4-3 base. So let's go and let's pick that and let's go back. Like I said, it's not really uh, clear as day what scheme he wants, but I can figure that out by, you know, elimination process. Just keep going through until I find the exact scheme that he wants to play in. Uh, as you can see, I mean, my constant, I got to go, I got to make one more offer on Zach Martin. As you can see, that's changing quickly. But uh, let's see where it was here. I think it was Davenport here. Yeah. So still doesn't like that scheme. It doesn't necessarily say what the team scheme is that he wants. But, you know, I, I could basically change it until I find it. Because that's exactly what I did with Zach Martin. He didn't want to play under my scheme. So I basically went in here and changed my scheme. Because I'm not even in the right section. I went in here and changed my scheme to what it is currently which is uh, West Coast Power Run. It was something different before. So I had to change that just to get him to, to sign on. But I'm not going to do that again with this. I'm just going to go back to... Um, I don't even know what my scheme is necessarily set to, but I definitely run uh, cover three, so we'll leave it on that. But yeah, that's you know, this is basically another way to control how uh, interest is when it comes to free agents. So I'm not going to be able to completely change it from a red bar to a full green bar, but if it's within a, it's within a certain amount, I mean, I could just go back and see what players are actually changing interest based off of that alone. And once again, I mean, now the Colts are coming in over the top with a last minute uh, bid, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to get a top of him. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you could tell, you know, like I said, if I wanted Nick Chubb to be more, more interested in me, um, I would have to, I mean, it, it's not West Coast scheme. It just says higher financials. So I'd have to find somebody that really fits that bill as, um, you know, a lot of these are not something you can control. But if it's a simple scheme fit, you can always control a scheme fit simply by going in and trying to get... Um, you know, just trying to change it to the scheme. Just find the scheme that that player is interested in. A lot of times will make the difference between them wanting to come to your team and not wanting to come to your team. Because like I said, Zach Martin didn't want to come to my team. And he still isn't 100% sold. As you can see, the interest isn't, a, you know, amazingly high. But at the end of the day, you can change that simply by finding the scheme that they do want to play in and setting it to that. And then after they sign with the team, go back and set it back to whatever you want. But I'm also trying not to kill my cap because, like I said, I got backup plans as far as, you know, I'll have a superstar lineman uh, not even playing at this point. So it's like part of me thinks, like, should I just, you know, be happy with the fact that I have multiple superstar linemen that could be playing? So I didn't end up getting Zach Martin. The, the salary got a little bit too rich for me, uh, especially since I didn't have a ton of cap space. He ended up on the Colts which is a team that won the bowl last year. So they're definitely going to be an interesting team to try to play with them and Quentin Nelson. But like I said, I didn't have as much cap space. He still has more cap space than me even. Actually, no, he doesn't. I mean, I guess the rookie reserve doesn't come into uh, account. But like I said, I have uh, a cheaper option, which at the end of the day is probably a better option for me. I still think it was a better deal for me to trade the 23rd pick and get a young player that can build up and be on the same tier for you know two million dollars a year rather than spending 20 to 30 million it was getting to the point where i was putting in 30 million a year which i wasn't really comfortable with didn't make a ton of sense giving my salary cap situation because when you do this you also have to think long term i have to re-sign guys like Devonte smith next year and my running back saquon barkley if i want to is only 28 years old so i'm probably going to resign him because he's 99 he's a 99 overall and uh, Devontae Smith is a 95 overall. I've actually got Devontae Smith was somebody I would have traded a while ago, but I actually got his speed up to a 93 
through just regular uh, boosts and increases. So I got to the point where I was like, I don't want to hamstring my salary cap for some of these players that I'm going to have to resign. Even guys like Dallas Goddard's on the last year of his deal, even though I'm probably not going to resign him. I'm probably going to be looking for a replacement player. Jordan Mailata is on the last year of his deal. It's to the point, Landon Dickerson, it's to the point where I really needed that money for the long term more, which is why ultimately I decided to let that go and skip free agency. Because like I said, I have three superstar or X-Factor linemen that I just have to build in Tom Gilkey, uh, Terrell Flowers, and Alexander Dwyer. And I have three open spaces. So it was to the point where I was like, do I really want to sit Dwyer on the bench? Or do I really want to sit you know, any of these guys on the bench when I have value in the fact that they're easily built young players on long, cheap contracts? It just made more sense to go that route. As all three of these linemen are all superstars, and they're all two to three, four million dollars. I'm basically getting all three of these superstars our X Factor lineman for a cheap deal at the same for less than I would have got for just paying Zach Martin. So it's better to try to keep the nucleus of the players that I have around than anything else. Uh, and there's still some opportunities for for some cap growth as I'm going to try to move guys like uh, Bryce Huff before the draft for some for some second or third round picks. Uh, and I'm probably just going to try to move uh, guys like Cam Jurgens to save the little bit that I can. Uh, you know, there's still some areas of opportunity to try to open up small amounts of cap space. But I think that that was probably the best way to go. So now that I just decided that I don't want to spend a ton of money because I'd rather retain the, play, the young players that I have rather than, you know, getting tied up in older contracts, which I think is a smart decision. I wasn't all in on Zach Martin to the point where I wanted to do that. I just wanted to see if I could have my cake and eat it too. Because like I said, I didn't necessarily want to trade away a first round pick like I did. But based on the fact that I probably would end up drafting a lineman, this particular lineman is a little bit more developed already. I don't have to wait a year to develop him. And I know he's probably better than any lineman in the draft for $2 million a year, I couldn't turn that up. So I traded that guy, I traded that first round pick, which is totally cool. Now, I usually don't recommend making any trades until after free agency, although a lot of people make that mistake and they'll make a trade when they could have just signed a guy. But I knew that Zach Martin was gonna be an arm and leg. He's a much older player. And I really thought that it was best to get a young player like this who could be great for 10 years. Uh, he's a superstar X-Factor lineman, which means he's gonna improve really fast. And the fact that I could get him under contract for $2 million a year just made way more sense. So now I just have more guys that I got to build up. I got three superstar linemen, like I was saying, which to me fits the three spots that I need to a T. And it's to the point where I'm happy with my line. Now I have to look at what else I need because I did lose one draft pick doing this. But at the end of the day, I still have four picks in the top 55. And I have a third. I'm actually trying to work get some force and stuff like that too. So I probably will have more picks by the time the draft comes around. But ultimately, um, you know, I just have to go through my roster now. First thing I'm going to do before I scout players is I'm going to go through my roster and I'm going to rank what do I actually need. Now, Jalen Hurts is an interesting position because I actually kind of want a quarterback with a stronger arm. But I don't know if I'm able to do anything because this guy's got a massive contract and I don't necessarily want to build a guy. But quarterback will be on my list. Not necessarily very high because I have a pretty good option and I'm thinking that... Over the course of the year, if I keep doing his arm, I could probably get his arm to a 90 by the time playoffs roll around. So that's what I'm going to go for most likely. Running back, I don't really need. Saquon Barkley, though, you know, it's it's a smaller need. I'll put that below quarterback. Like I said, I'm ranking these. Uh, but it's to the point where I could probably use a young running back if there's one available. Because I might not want to re-sign Saquon Barkley, even though he's an amazing player. And I got his speed up to a 97. And, you know, if there's a good player there, maybe I'll fall in love with somebody on a cheap and think differently about re-signing. Saquon because you know he got up there pretty quick and he is getting a little bit you know he's getting old he's, he's 28 he'll be 29 by the time I gotta resign him that's usually around the time where they start going down in value anyway uh, receivers not really a need but I will put that under running back because I do have a lot of guys under contract and this is another scenario maybe I don't want to resign Devontae Smith because he's only got one year left on his deal so that's something where it could happen tight ends another one I'm probably not gonna resign Goddard because he's definitely um, he's on the older side and I don't really want to um, you know the speed was always an issue anyway so tight end is probably my top position on offense that I want to go for and I know there's two tight ends on the list that are pretty good offensive line solved all their problems I solved all the problems with the trade so I have no issues on offensive line that's not even on my board although I will keep an eye on it as there's always uh, some opportunities there I guess uh, defensive line is not really a ton of need there either I know that already I got all my spots filled linebacker I don't really use a lot of linebacker uh, but I still need a linebacker for certain personnel packages so I'll put that as my second 
uh, need right now because that's something where I don't even have an outside linebacker, right outside linebacker. And even though, like I said, I really like Devin White, he doesn't even really play like that. That's actually a waste of money. I, I mostly just use safeties and linebackers anyway. Cornerback, I got some age. So I'm definitely going to put cornerback uh, at the top of the list. Because it's going to be to the point where these guys are going to have to be replaced. I got Keely Ringo. I drafted a pretty interesting looking guy in Jaleel Gaines. But there's not a lot of youth on this roster. And then when I get the safety, I really don't have any. Because Sheldon, City Brown's a superstar. Uh, Connor Rogers, who was my first or second round pick last year, is a superstar. Who actually got boosted up to an X-Factor already. And I have Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, who's a really good third safety, even though he's not a superstar and X-Factor. I can try to work on that and maybe get him from a starter with superstar. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I also have Tristan McCollum, who won Defensive Player of the Year year last year as you can see it says award winner he won defensive back of the year and defensive player of the year i made a video about him he's six foot three he's a beast he's another guy there so i have four safeties that i like and i could try to work up so safety's not really a need but if i see one that i think is a superstar i definitely might take a shot at that so we'll put safety as my fourth need on the list and that's pretty much it so my top need is probably going to be cornerback or tight end, although tight end is not something I typically want to take too high because I think you can get a good one later in the draft as I already did a little bit of pre-scouting, looking at all that. But I already made a full video on how to scout, so I'm not going to make a video about that today. This is more about just, you know, trying to build a team, free agency tips, stuff like that. So if you guys want to see that, I'll have a link in the description. I should have it popping up on the screen right now or it'll be at the end of the video. So stick around for that. But I will give you guys a quick refresher on that as I'm going to go to, um, you know, my Scout College Players section. Uh, this is something that's not too difficult. Uh, I'm just going to go to Prospects. And then, like I said, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to basically look at all of them and just go from the top to the bottom. That's all I'm really going to do. And when it comes to these guys, all I really care about is throw power and speed when it comes to quarterback. When it comes to halfbacks, it's really just speed. Maybe receiver receiving ability is kind of important because I do want to be able to catch the ball since I try to pass a lot. Uh, when it comes to receivers, it's really just speed and height. If they're really tall, I'm not as huge on their speed as if they're really short. Uh, it's really, you're kind of playing the game there because shorter receivers, taller receivers typically won't have uh, crazy speed. And to find that out, all you really got to do is go to their physicals. You'll see their combine ratings, their pro day ratings. You'll see guys like this. If they run a 4-4 four, four or in that range or lower, they're on my board. If they if they didn't run a 4-4, four, four, they're not on my board at all. So a guy like this at 6-5, 449 four, 445 I'm cool with that no problems he's on the board I'll write his name down as somebody to keep an eye on but when it comes to guys that are shorter if they're like 510 then I want to make sure they ran like a 43 which he did on his his pro day so you know he can be on my board but that's really how I'm going to balance this so a guy like this who's 58 he better run a blazing 43 speed or I'm not interested and that's exactly what he has he runs a 433 to 431 so given that he's really short I could still take him but 58's really on the border of the height that I I'd rather a guy like 5'10", uh, you know, if I'm going to pick somebody like that. Because short guys that are super fast like that, they're important, but their catch radius is really small. So, you know, that's something I'll have to I'll have to take into account. So I'm just going to go from the top of the board here all the way down, just looking at their physicals. I'm going to look at their height, and I'm going to look at their speed, and that's all I care about when it comes to receivers. That's all you should care about as well. But since I'm looking for tight ends, we're actually going to spend more time here in this video because I really need a tight end that's fast, faster than Goddard anyway. And these guys really only get to about a 4'6". So if I can find guys that have a 4'6 speed, typically they'll say vertical threat next to their name, but you really want to check all these guys. Uh, that's really going to be where I'm looking at. And right here, Lamar, Lamar Morgan had a 4.60. Oh, that's probably going to be the best. Although I don't always necessarily trust the pro day scores. That's something I'm a little bit hesitant about. As you can see, it's always better on the pro day, or at least it usually is. But I'm going to look at all these guys. Even the guys that say blocking, is they typically won't have uh, the fastest 40s. But you never know, because there are sometimes guys that are in the possession category and stuff like that. Like this guy right here ran a 4.58. So this guy's going to be towards the top of my board when it comes to tight ends. And I don't have to necessarily take a first round pick to get this guy because he's projected around three and four so and that's the thing i'm not necessarily looking for i mean if i want to get a guy who's most likely going to have a better development trait it's going to be these guys that say round one so lamar morgan is probably going to be number one on my board as you can see he's also got an a run block which is probably the second most important thing to me is speed and then his run blocking ability and he's going to you know both these guys are really high so i think if i get either one of these guys in the draft they're probably going to be an x factor or something in that range anyway or a superstar ability at least if i had to guess one of these two guys will probably be that as it's a pretty good tight end draft so these are going to be uh my two top targets if i get into like the second round i don't know if i'm going to try to take one of these guys in the first round because there actually are a lot of tight ends i already pre-scouted this if i remember correctly guys like um 
I forget. I think Austin Hood had a really fast 40, which is a guy that I could get later in the draft. He's got a 4.62 and 4.61, so it's like he's fast. I mean, there's plenty of speed to be had in the later rounds, and that's kind of all I'm really worried about because when you think of how easy it is to build receivers, tight ends are in the same ballpark. You just have to throw the ball to them a lot, give them a lot of stats, and they're going to move up really quickly, and that's really all that matters to me. So even though I like Goddard, there's not a ton of X factors and superstar abilities on tight ends specifically that I'm worried about, and I think that I probably would push these guys down and get one of these um, you know, cheap speed guys later in the draft because there really are a lot. I think Greg Meredith was one of them too, if I remember correctly, because like I said, I already pre-scouted. As you can see, he ran a 4, 5, 6. So this guy here um, might be somebody I try to take in like the third round or something, even though it says he's a potential UDFA. And then the biggest issue is his run blocking isn't great, but he has good weight. He's six foot three, 270. So, you know, I, I would imagine maybe his uh, his three-cone drill or something wasn't really good. Maybe his acceleration uh, wasn't really good. Although it looks pretty good. He's seventh in, in uh, in the 20 yard shuttle, uh, although his, his three cone drill isn't that great, so maybe his agility isn't too great. But stuff like that is less important to me as just speed, stretching the field, you know, stuff like that. That's probably the most important thing. So, like I said, for offensive positions, I'm really just looking at speed, but that's pretty much across the board. Um, if there's a guy, you know, there's things like uh, if this top five left tackle falls for whatever reason, it's worth it's worth a, a try because it'll probably be like a superstar or an X Factor, even though I don't really need that right now. I'd probably be more interested if, like, you know, one of these outside speed rushers fell. Um, guy like Danny Peak, maybe he won't be too high on people's boards. Even this guy here is a power rusher. He says he's, uh, you know, which would make you think he's fast. But if you look at his 40 time, he's just as fast as the top guy. So this guy here's got really good athleticism. So if he falls in the draft, maybe I'll take a flyer at him. There are players that look really good to the point where if they fall, I might be able to say, you know, I might, I might not be able to pass them up depending on what it is. But I'm going to scout every position that I do and don't need. And then I'm going to make a list so that when the draft comes around, it's much easier for me to find my guys rather than going through this entire list as EA doesn't really have a ton of options. I mean, you can add favorites and I will end up doing that, but looking at this entire board can be a little bit confusing and I find it's better to just have you know little notes somewhere of players that you like that you can write down and decide, you know what, that's who I want to pick up. Now we are in the second stage of free agency, so if I want to go back to sign free agents, this is something that I said in my last video on these topics. Um, I'm not going to spend on a guy that I might be able to pick up, uh, you know, at a much cheaper deal. So if I go through, if I still, I mean, I really still kind of need, uh, you know, cornerbacks or something like that. I might need a cornerback, even though I'm not really uh, too high on any of these particularly. Um, if there's somebody out there that, you know, is a decent contract. I mean, I'm, I'm going to try to find somebody that maybe they get drafted because I can still probably use another safety too. If I want to take, say, a guy like this, you know, no offers. I could try to buy him now or I could just wait and get him on a one-year deal once the free agent market opens up, which to me makes more sense. So don't get too caught up in trying to sign these guys on the second wave. That's probably the best thing that I could say. Other than that, you know, I'm basically just waiting for the draft. Because even, even guys like this who are a six foot three, almost 90 speed, um, type of player, this is the type of thing where it's like, do I really want to take this guy now, try to compete with two guys, pay, you know, there's two guys already offering, he's interested in my team, but I'm going to have to pay more if I try to compete for this guy, say I want a safety, I could, you know, try to put three, four mil down a year, lock him in for a couple seasons, or I could just basically wait for the free agency market to open up and try to go after a guy like this who's, you know, he's not exactly the same. He's a little bit faster at 91 speed. He's got better change of direction. We'll get them both on screen. He's got better change of direction in Burgess. Like I said, the only thing is he's really just not um, that fast. He's not interested in me at all right now, which is the other thing. But I mean, he's really not that tall. He's five foot eleven, so it's like it's really up to me if I want to try to uh, compete with these guys, pay more money, or just wait till the free agency market opens up and get this guy for a one-year deal, which will probably fit my system a little bit better and it'll give me more flexibility since I won't be locked into him. Because even if I sign this guy, I have guys like this on my roster, but even if I sign this guy, he's gonna have a hard time competing to play because this is a guy who's probably you know a user, probably something that um, you know for me it's uh, Tristan McCollum who won defensive player of the year last year as my user or I could get a guy like this who probably wouldn't be too great unless I'm using him anyway and it just gives me another guy to build so you really got to look at what's you know on your team ultimately I built this team mostly through what I already had through trades and through the draft I don't really like to spend a ton of money on free agents because to me that's just a good way to get you in cap hell and it's not always worth it. Now, when it comes to actually scouting players, like I said, you can hit the Y or triangle button to put a little heart next to them. But like I said, when you write it down on your phone, you could also put stuff like, 
you know, I can make a note to myself that this this running back has, you know, a four two nine forty. You know what I mean? So it's like I could I could when I see that I'll know I'm going to want this guy more. You know what I mean? It's like I, it's if you just put um, these little hearts next to all these players. All you're gonna see is a bunch of hearts, and you're not even gonna remember why you like them necessarily. So that's why, like I said, if it was up to me, I'm gonna use a pen and pad. Like I said, I'm using a note in my phone uh, where I can write down their name and why I'm interested in them. So when I'm in the draft, I have something to look at as far as you know why I want to pick that player. Knowing that this guy runs a sub four three, he runs a four two nine. It's gonna put it, you know, compared to other running backs on my board, that's gonna basically move him up to the top. Okay, so the draft starts in about an hour. I just did my draft board you can see I put hearts next to all the guys that I value uh, even if I don't need them because the top three you can see they're all quarterbacks I mean I'm in the quarterback spot but um, this is something you know, I, I recommend doing every single position even in positions that you're not interested in because if you see a player slip and you know that they have value they're gonna have value to somebody after the draft especially with something like a quarterback which everybody always needs so i did every single position running backs i don't really need one maybe i do this is a situation where you know if a, if a running back falls or there's a running back there that i like and they turn out to be like a superstar or a, a x-factor player maybe i don't re-sign saquon barkley next year maybe i let him go because he's too expensive and i have a player there in place so you always want to scout every single position uh, because there's always going to be value to be had, whether it's to stash a guy and trade him later for something or whether it's to start eventually uh, on your roster because maybe a player gets too expensive to keep and you realize that it's better just to keep you know, the young player and build them instead. You always have to keep that in mind because there is salary cap constraints. Now, when it comes to actually picking what players I like, I really just look at them. I look at things like throw power, which is probably the most important. You can see right here, this guy's got elite throw power. And then I look at his 40 times. This is pretty much all I look at for quarterbacks because physical attributes are the only thing you can't really change. You can always build up a player's uh, accuracies, uh, whatever position it is, you can build up. But you can't build up their their speed as easily or their throw power as easily because physical attributes are pretty much set in stone. Even though you can get them up a point here, a point there, uh, at the end of the day, it's not nearly going to be as quick as you know getting accuracies up. So you really just want to look for raw physical traits. So running back like this guy here, I think ran a sub four three. You know you can always build up whatever else you need on a player like that. So it really doesn't matter. So I went through all these positions just looking for physical traits that I liked, and then if they're there at a good time where I value. I might pick them up. So, you know, and that includes guys like there's receivers that are all the way down at the bottom that are running like four three forties and stuff like that. They'll probably go a lot higher than they're listed here. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter to me. I just want to know where they're at so I can make that determination. As you can see right here, this guy here is running a 4-3-3. He's rated as the 43rd player, but he's going to get picked in the first or second round because of that 40 time. But at least I know where they're at. So that's really all I want to do. I want to map out this board here by putting hearts next to it by hitting wire triangle. But then I also wrote on my phone which one of these players like i wrote the 40 times or whatever of every single player like if it's a receiver i'll write you know this top guy here is six five his 40 times okay but i'll, I'll write that he's six five that's my interest or this guy here his 40 times the the thing i think he ran like a four three eight or something in his pro day or a four three seven in his pro day which puts him on my board so i'll write them their name down on my phone and then i'll put their 40 time because when you only have like a minute or so to pick you can't take the time needed to go in and out of every one of these and then cycle over to physical traits where you just have it in your phone okay i'm gonna be looking for this guy because he ran a 4-3 you know, I mean, it's really that simple. So I have my phone, I got a note uh, screen pulled up, and then I write all this stuff down there, as well as I have uh, the heart. So it's like I can go to them quickly, and then I can look at my phone and say, okay, I'm interested in this guy because he ran a, well, let's actually see real quick. I don't, I don't have that right in front of me, but Lamar Morgan ran a 4-6. So I have him there. If he's on the board, and I'm thinking, okay, I want to pick this guy. I go right to him. I know exactly what it is. Plus, it has, you know, a short synopsis of the traits that I'm looking for anyway. Like, with tight ends, I look for run blocking. He's got a a and run blocking that's cool that's the only other thing i really look at i don't care about nothing else when it comes to tight ends receiver is just heightened speed running back it's just speed quarterback it's just throw power and 
uh, speed. Uh, with linemen, I'm going to look for things. I'm, I like to pass, so I might look for things like pass blocking, but really anything high, run uh, run blocks, uh, pass blocks, all that. I just want to make sure that they're high across the board when it comes to these guys, although I don't really don't need linemen, so I didn't even scout them as much because I don't want to get suckered into pulling another lineman since I have my five starters for like the next five years or more. But that is, once again, something that you probably should do because I have a couple of linemen that their contracts are coming up, so it might be a good idea to look into these guys uh, for that scenario. But that's pretty much it. When it comes to edge rush guys, I look for speed. Defensive line in general, I look for speed and strength. Uh, when it comes to linebackers, I look for speed and coverage ability. So a guy like this here, he has an A zone coverage. I don't know why I didn't pick him. He's probably slow. As you can see, he runs a 4-7. So you're not going to get on the field with that. But that is something if he's still sticking around. Like a guy like Roman Craver, he's got that A zone coverage, which I value. But then he also has a 4-4-9 speed. So that's why I'm going to look at this guy. But if, you know, if it gets late in the draft and nobody picked this guy up, maybe I'll pick him up for a flyer later in the draft because of that zone coverage speed or that zone coverage ability. But that's pretty much it. So for linebackers, speed and zone coverage, once again, when it comes to a guy like this here, he's got a first round projection, even though he's not very fast. I put him on my board because I can always move him to end. And if he has, you know, since the first round projection is the only first round projected guy, he's actually rated as like the seventh or eighth best player. If nobody wants him because his speed scares him away, I'll, I could take a flyer on him. And if he has a superstar ability or an X factor, I could always put him at defensive end in my scheme and try to put no outsiders on him or something. So it's like I put a star there just in case because a lot of these guys that have high round, uh, high grades, uh, it's possible that they still have value. And then when it comes to cornerbacks, like I said, I went through every single cornerback looking for speed and height once again. Same thing with safety, speed and height. Although um, this one guy, I think he said he has... Um, you know, bone crushing hits. So that means that guy here might also have really good uh, hit power, which is obviously important as well. So, you know, stuff like that. But this has got my whole board set up. I got the draft starting soon. Stick around if you guys want to see that. So the draft is done. I signed a bunch of free agents after the league started because we're, you know, we're in week one of the preseason. So the free agent market opened up and I signed a bunch of guys that I didn't have to compete with anybody for, which to me is a better way. So let's go and let's take a look at my roster right now. I haven't set my depth chart, but uh, let's take a look at some of my draft picks and some of the guys that I picked up on the free agent market. Now, I got Eric Hales here, who was just sitting out there with a 90, 94 speed, but I have a plus three speed boost, who's up to a 97. That guy was just sitting on the market, didn't have to compete with him at all. Got a couple of uh, interesting names here. I don't think, I didn't draft some of these guys. I don't know how they got on my roster. I'm going to have to cut them. But uh, yeah, they probably got auto-signed. Uh, Alvin Colvin, I drafted. He's a 93 speed. Now he's a 96. And I think Davenport, I drafted last year. But lots of plots of you know speed of running back since that's typically what you want. As far as receivers go, I picked up Esteban Reyes and Demarcus Palmer kind of late in the draft, just trying to find guys that had like cheap speed. And Palmer was the best one with 93, but I don't think I'm really going to mess with any of them because I, I didn't really need a receiver anyway. I already had uh, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Quez Watkins, and that's, you know, my three receiving core. It's pretty much set. Now, I did draft this guy here in the with my first pick, uh, which I needed. Apparently, uh, Will Disley also got on the free agent market, by the way, who has a superstar ability. I don't know what happened there, but I might try to make him like a crazy blocker. But Dallas Goddard's getting kind of old. He's 30. He's slow at 84 speed and 87 acceleration. So this guy's faster than him. And he has a hidden development trait, which I typically don't get to see. But since I'm a commissioner and I'm making a video, and everybody in my league is going to get to see him anyway because that's just how we do it. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take a look at this live and direct by going to, to edit player and then tabbing over twice so we can see if I nailed this guy who's only a star dev. That's kind of disappointing. I thought maybe he'd be a superstar or... Or X Factor, but at least he has, uh, you know, at least he has a, a hidden dev trait, so I can't be too mad. But I'm not really sure if he's even my tight in the future based on the fact that he really isn't as fast as I was hoping for anyway. So that draft pick wasn't the best, but I wouldn't consider it a bust by any means. Um, because he's a star and I could probably work him up. Those dev trades go up from time to time too. So we'll see what happens there. My second pick or my third pick, I'm not really sure. I had four picks or three picks in the second round. That tight end was my first round pick because it just, everybody was just stealing all the speed. But this guy here, another guy, I went through for three of my first three picks as far as hidden dev trades go. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's pick or let's see what uh, his dev ability is as he is a superstar. So at least my second pick, I nailed a superstar. Um, he I really liked because he had an A in pass coverage rating. I'll go ahead and back out. His only real issue was he doesn't have elite speed. He had good speed, but at an 86, you know, that's something that um, is okay. I mean, I can, I can do things to work that up. Uh, I don't really use my linebackers a lot anyway, so that's that's the thing. I, I, I use mostly safeties in my defense. 
but uh, pretty decent looking uh, recognition. I mean, he's got 70 zone, which is a great start. 78 awareness too, so a really decent uh, pick up there, especially since he's a superstar. I guess I didn't even pick a right outside linebacker. I have to change that to depth chart. I did pick up this guy here. I think he was my third straight uh, hidden dev trait that I nailed. Uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look at that. Like I said, after that, there really wasn't a lot, and I was really just picking speed or trying to find guys that had speed. So hopefully this guy's a superstar too, and he's a star. So my last draft was a little bit better because I hit three out of four superstars, one of which already became an X Factor. This one, I just have two, uh, two star dev traits and a superstar which i'm cool with but i was really hoping that marion would have been a little bit uh a little bit higher but he does have a 77 zone start i got him at 95 speed right now at six foot three which is the real reasons that i chose him i mean 95 speed with six foot three and a really good starting zone coverage which is the only thing i'm really going to work up and i'm pretty happy with that 90 acceleration is pretty good too i got just a little gains in the draft late last year he's also got some speed so you know obviously having that built up in the coaching tree helps as he's technically at 92 speed but you're gonna have a hard time throwing over this guy and like i said i work on him and ringo uh to try to get these guys up to uh you know to i mean ringo's already up to uh, i already worked him up to a superstar <laughs> but uh he's gonna be one side of my future i mean i have uh trey uh white's gonna be leaving soon darius slay's gonna be leaving soon so Ringo and Marion are going to be the tr uh, future, and they're both six foot two, six foot three, 95 speed, 97 speed. That's really what I'm looking for. So I got the future cornerback there. Uh, I didn't really draft anything as far as safeties go because I got Carlos Rogers last year, who's already an X Factor player. He was a superstar when I drafted him, so I did a pretty good job there. And I got Sidney Brown up to a superstar too, just through hard work. Uh, but I really didn't need anything. I did find Xavier Woods once again in the free agent market, unattested, A2 overall. Nobody was really competing with me. I'd rather do that and get this guy on a $2.75 million deal than overpay for somebody slightly better. You know what I mean? So I feel like I really rounded out my roster. But the proof is in the pudding as I did work this team up to be uh, what they are now, which is, like I said, one of the highest rated teams in the league, I would imagine, especially with a 95 offense. As my phone goes off, I forgot to turn that off. But my defense is up to a 90. My biggest issue with this team is all the talent on defense is young and requires a lot of work. So that's really what I got to put in. I got like all these safeties I'm working up from young. Tristan McCollum actually won, def off or won Defensive Player of the Year and DB of the Year last year. I wonder if he went up again or not. He's only a star right now. But he's another guy who's like, I'm working him up. So I got four safeties that are all like really good. I don't even really need Xavier Woods, but maybe I'll do something with one of the other guys and play Xavier Woods. I'm not really sure. But I like how this roster's going. Let me know in the comment section as I start to sign a few more guys because I'm probably under on the roster. But let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Now, I did make one more move to improve my roster. I went out and traded for Joe Thune. I'm not really sure how to say his name. Off the Kansas City Chiefs. And all it really required was for me to trade... Um, one of my uh, superstar linemen, which I really don't want to build too many linemen anyway, so I'm really not that upset about. But I traded him and my first round pick next year as I want to try to go all in on this team this year since, uh, you know, the end of Madden 24 is coming up pretty close. So I wanted some veterans because you can't build all these players all at the same time. It's pretty difficult. I already showed how on my defense I have a lot of guys that I'm building, and it's just very difficult to build a lot of young players all at the same time so to me it's best to try to get a few veterans in there so i don't have to you know I don't have to, there's only so much xp to go around there's only so many focused players that you can have uh, but at the end of the day, this roster feels like a Super Bowl caliber roster. I'll try to keep you guys up to date on this year's, um, you know, progress. As always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching. Man, my shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.